Let's talk about stealing and particularly some things you may be doing that you do not consider stealing that actually are stealing. I gave pastoral counseling to adult and teen challenge students for about eight years. And one of the things that surprised me was the amount of times that stealing came up in our conversations. Many times they had stolen, say, from a thrift store that they worked at, and they were confessing it to me and sometimes hoping that that would be enough and they wouldn't have to tell full-time staff about it. And I would always encourage them, come completely clean. Let them know and whatever consequences or disciplines that might come your way, accept that as from the hand of the Lord. Keep a clear conscience as much as possible. Welcome to Truth Talk with Ed Skipper, published every Monday and Thursday at 6 a.m. Pacific time, where I take the truth of Scripture and apply it to your daily living. We are in the Eighth Commandment, Exodus 20, verse 15. Very simple. You shall not steal. Stealing is related to the 10th commandment on coveting. We see, we desire, and we take. Now, if you have ever had the experience of someone stealing from you, you know what a sense of violation that is. When I was a college student at the University of Oregon, I used to store my change in a bucket in my apartment. And I had hundreds of dollars worth of change in that bucket when it disappeared. It was sitting in front of a window and someone had seen it from outside and got in and taken it. And there was just sense, a, a sense of me having been violated. So let's talk though about what you might be doing that is stealing. So here is one possibility. You go to a fair, a concert, a game, you have children or grandchildren, and you fudge about their age in order to save money or get them in free, get a discount. Another thing would be that you steal ideas, you plagiarize, or it could be with your employer that you do personal things on work time, or you misreport the hours you worked, or you get overtime that you don't deserve. Or it could be that you are subscribing to a service, maybe a television or movie or music or some online service using another password from someone else who's subscribing and you yourself are not paying for that subscription like you ought to be. Maybe it has to do with deductions that you take on your taxes or reimbursements that you don't deserve. So, we want to be people of integrity. Why? Because Jesus Christ, if you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, you are forgiven by him. You're in right standing with him. You have a relationship with him that is intimate and that will last forever. And out of gratitude for that, you want to be a person of full integrity. I did a funeral one time for a a gentleman and their family was very proud of him because he was a man of integrity. And one of the examples they gave was he used to do metal detecting work and one day he found a ring that was a championship football ring and was convinced that that would be valuable to the person who lost it. He went to extreme measures to track down the owner of that ring, putting an ad in the paper and so forth. And the family was saying, Here's an example of this man of integrity whom we have loved. Don't you want to be a person of integrity like Daniel in the Old Testament? When his enemies wanted to find something against him, they could find nothing. They had to take his prayer life and make it illegal in order to have something against him. So I encourage you in response to Jesus Christ and his grace in your life, commit yourself to full integrity when it comes to stealing. Hey, if Truth Talk is valuable to you. Make sure you like this video. If you are listening to the podcast, I'd appreciate it if you would give it a rating. And stay tuned for Monday's episode because we're going to talk about excuses that we give to justify stealing. And until next time, may you be fully committed to being a person of integrity, especially when it comes to stealing.